the Honorable Bryce Marlott is the Vice Chairman of the Oklahoma Senate Committee on Transportation. Thanks for being with us, Mr. Marlott. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, uh, Ranking Member Inhofe. I really appreciate. Sorry. Thank you. I uh, really appreciate the opportunity to testify before this committee. Uh, as you said, I serve in the Oklahoma State Senate, Senate District 27, and also serve as Vice Chairman on the uh, Transportation Committee. And uh, Senate District 27. Now, let me interrupt. It, it, it kind of tell the panel what it's what your district is like. What what? It's the of, Senate District 27 is is the largest Senate district in in uh, the state of Oklahoma and the entire legislature. It encompasses all of the Panhandle of of Oklahoma and all the northwest uh, part of the state. Um, it's a, about 320 miles across. Uh, so uh, we we've got we've got a. a, a a lot of ground to cover, obviously. But uh, anyway, I, I really appreciate the opportunity to, to, to be here, and, and we encompass a lot of obvious uh, U.S. federal highways and, and, uh, and, and highways on the national system, uh, and, and I, I'm continually working on transportation needs in, in the state of Oklahoma. Approximately 60 million people, 21 percent of the population, live in rural communities in the United States. This is an increase of about 11 percent. Uh, since the 1990s. Uh, millions of Americans travel on rural county and state road systems every day. Rural roads are vast throughout the country and have significant needs. The county highway systems in Oklahoma is compromised of 85,000 miles. Oklahoma's rural nature and, and historically ag and energy uh, based economy has witnessed the conversion of many farm to market roads into, the hi into highways. While these roads were ideal for transportation uh, uh, transporting livestock and and uh, and crops to market, they're less than adequate when supporting the da the daily needs um, of transportation. <clears throat> in in fact, based on the evaluation of safety features such as passing opportunities, adequate sight distance, the existence of paved s shoulders, recovery areas for er errant vehicles, and the severity of hills, 24 percent of our over 12,000 miles of rural highways alone rate is critical or inadequate. Over 4,700 uh, miles of, of Oklahoma highways are two-lane roads without shoulders, and this lack of adequate capacity for Oklahoma rural highways prevents rural Oklahoma from, partic from participating fully in the state and national economy. We will never have the jobs and economic development that we need in rural Oklahoma or rural America if we don't address infrastructure. Rural roads also pose unique challenges. For, for example, generally speaking, rural roads have greater rate of traffic fatalities than urban roads. Rural accidents occur at an alarming rate, and the severity of the collisions is significant. When specifically considering the accidents that occur in Oklahoma's critical or inadequate highways, 86 percent happen on rural two-lane roads. However, many of these critical uh, needed highway safety improvements that could prevent property damage per personal injury or the tragic loss of life remain unattended due to the lack of funding. In particular, I've been working on to upgrade U.S. Highway 270, which stretches from the west part of Oklahoma City through northwestern Oklahoma and all throughout the Panhandle. Currently, the Oklahoma Department of Transportation has plans for each section of the crucial corridor through 2017. These upgrades are planned in each county from Canadian through Woodward and on throughout the Panhandle. It is extremely important to me for this uh, perspective, of, for the perspective of safety, jobs, and participating in the Oklahoma national economy, for this 270 corridor to be completely modernized. The nation's rural bridges have unique needs. For example, Oklahoma has over 14,000 bridges. 5,600 of them are on rural highways. When considering the 6,700 highway bridges, over 1,400 are either too narrow or sub to support daily traffic or have structural deficiencies or both. More than 1,100 of the 1,400 bridges, or 78 percent, exist on rural areas, and in addition, rural commerce can be severely impacted by bridges when restricted load limits as detours can be uh, add many miles to the price paid uh, for the transportation needs uh, in fuel and time. It's imperative for the rural highways and bridges to be returned and kept to a state of good repair. These highways move entire sectors of our economy, including, including ag, energy, forestry, and tourism, to mention a few. Steady, predictable, and increasing funding sources are necessary because of the, fu the funding 
our transportation professionals to, to plan our progress and affords the opportunity for our contractors to develop their workforces and construct our roads and bridges as efficiently as possible. States and local units of governments cannot alone finance, construct, and maintain national systems of highways. A strong federal commitment is necessary to ensure the continuity of, and viability of our transportation infrastructure far into the future. Since the current federal highway authorization bill expired and uh, on, on September 30th of 2009, states have been operating under a string of continuing resolutions, which costs Oklahoma about $15 million a month. The Congress' uh, recent action to extend the federal highway program through the end of the year is significant um, and, and, and will help, while a re, but while a renew, new reauthorization bill is under development, Oklahoma is consistently proud of the work of our senior senator, Senator Inhofe, and I'm proud to say that I've worked for you, and, uh, and thank you very much for, for, uh, for, for the reauthorization bill that you worked on. The states that want to do our part to find new funding solutions to our nation's transportation needs. Over the last three years, there's been approximately a 5% decline in Oklahoma motor fuel tax uh, due to less demand, increased fuel efficiencies. This has resulted in a $30 million loss in revenues for my state's roads and bridges. I, um, as a member of the, as vice chairman of the Oklahoma Transportation Committee, I offered a Senate Bill 1941 to create, create an innovative funding tr uh, task force for the purpose of studying and evaluating innovations, technologies, and new methods being employed nationally and by other states to more adequately, adequately and equitably fund roads and bridges and infrastructure, including both new construction and maintenance. The, this legislation passed the Oklahoma Senate on March 1, and I would expect quick consideration in the House of Representatives. Currently, the funding sources of fuel and gross production tax fluctuate a great deal. The federal fuel tax is... If you could, oh. if you could wind it up, Mr. Mullet, please. Okay. We've made great strides in investing in the, in the infrastructure and reversing the tide of declining funding in Oklahoma. And I, I appreciate you guys' support and, and your, your uh, work on, on, on the new authorization bill and, and would yield for questions uh, as, as you see fit. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, our next uh, 